Hey, what's up guys? Sir Eminon here, and welcome back to another episode of Roach 1000 Dueling with Grading. This time I'm going to be playing actually another rogue deck, which is going to be Rocket Orcus, actually. Uh, so this is pretty interesting, because obviously Orcus hasn't been good for quite some time. It's very vulnerable on its normal summon, and it doesn't really do anything unfair on like the top decks right now. But it's a pretty fun rogue deck, and uh, you guys did ask to uh, see some more rogue decks, so I put up a community tab poll. And actually all the decks that I put on there were relatively close in votes, but this one took it by a very narrow margin. I'm probably going to feature multiple of those decks, so not to worry, I will be getting around to more of them in the future. But uh, it took me a while to actually get to an Orcus list that I was satisfied with, uh, hence, you know, kind of the drop in my win rate there. Uh, I spent a couple of losses trying to actually, you know, make this deck not horrible. Uh, so I got something that I felt was at least decent, which is pretty much all you can ask for if you're playing Orcus right now. Um, but we're going to be playing against Dogmatic Invoked, so that is uh, going to be pretty exciting. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. I win the RPS and choose to go first. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a disclaimer here. I make some very weird plays, and the deck's not going to be very convincing game one. Um, but stick with me because there are some things I want to just point out, and it gets a bit better in game two. Um, but yeah, our opener is Foolish, Double Ravine, Dark Worm, and Clap Serpent. So a lot of Orcus cards in our hand here. Uh, but yeah, the Dragon Portion actually is a very nice way to get into the um, into Chaos Ruler, which is like kind of the whole point of the Rocket stuff. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on theory, so if you guys do want to see a deck profile, uh, give the video a like. Uh, if, it re if it reaches 100 likes, I will do like an in-depth kind of deck building theory kind of build, um, or video rather. But yeah, uh, this is essentially just to get more Chaos Ruler access and more extenders. And then his hand is Alistair, Meltdown, Ecclesia, Ash, Desires. So he has both parts of his engine as well as a hand trap. Um, we should be able to play past the Ash, but uh, I kind of mess up here. <laughs> um, so I activate Ravine, I pitch Dark Worm, and then he Ashes it. He probably thinks I'm on like a Dragon Link build right now, um, just playing like a bunch of weird stuff. But uh, surprise, it's actually not Dragon Link. It will, it's going to look like it for a while, probably on his end. Uh, but we're going to bring back the Dark Worm, of course. Uh, the goal is to send Apps Router there. So I can add Tracer and then turn the Stark Worm into a copy of a Striker Dragon so I can get Boot and summon the Tracer. But because I got Ash, I have to do this in kind of a weird order. Uh, so I activate Foolish here and I actually do send Abs Rider off of it. What I could have done, and probably what I should have done, was use a second copy of Ravine to pitch the Collapse Serpent. But I didn't really want to throw away that many cards for Router. But the problem with this is that now I'm not guaranteed to have Orcus plays, which is kind of the point of the deck. Um, I was kind of just banking on the fact that Chaos Warrior was going to get me there. Or worst case scenario, if that card didn't resolve, then I was just going to be able to go Dragoon uh, and sit on that for a little while. And in that case, if I had Dragoon, I wanted to have cards in hand. And I didn't want to throw away my entire hand, which is like, I guess, fair. But um, I'm not guaranteed to have an Orcus play this turn, which uh, is going to come back to bite me, as you're about to see. But Rowdy is going to search a copy of Tracer. Yeah, so, like, I think if I were to do this hand again, I would have just actually done the second Ravine uh, and just... You're not, you really can't afford to be playing super safe and conservative with this deck, because it is Orcus, right? Like, you don't have the resiliency of, like, Dragon Link or Infernoble. You just kind of have to go for it, like, just throw your entire hand at the wall and hope something sticks. But we're going to turn the Dark Worm into a Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon going to add a copy of Boot Sector. And then we're going to use the Boot Sector to summon out the Tracer, and then Tracer pop the Boot Sector to summon a Recharger. And the whole point, again, is just going to Chaos Ruler. Now... I have three copies of Nightmare that I can mill, and I have three copies of Gyusu that I can reveal to add to hand because I haven't normal summoned yet. So it's like 6 and 31, it's like, okay, so each of those mills, or each of those excavates is around a 20% chance, give or take. So I'm like, alright, given the fact that for each of those excavates, I have like a good chance of seeing it, I have a very high chance of like getting something that I want, right? Well, I actually, not only do I not hit any of those, but I also mill the Red Eyes Fusion, which turns off my Dragoon play. Now, if I mill the Red Eyes Black Dragon, it's not bad. I can just add it to hand and then go into Anaconda and send it from hand. It wouldn't have been great, but it would have at least, you know, not turned off the play like uh, milling Red Eyes Fusion did here. Which definitely sucked. Uh, and I'm not thrilled about it, but it is what it is, right? So, yeah, you can see why it... It definitely would have been better for me to Foolish Burial like the Nightmare, just so I can guarantee an Orcus play. Because here, I just kind of shot myself in the foot, and I was just really relying on either Chaos Ruler resolving, like I said, or just going to Verite worst case scenario. But now both of those options are no longer on the table, and I have to make a very, very weak board. Um, I actually almost considered scooping here, but I'm like, nah, I better just play this out. Might, might as well. It's game one. Uh, so I'm just going to go summon Wyvern Burster, and... Um, I have a brain fart here, so I'm just going to fast forward this until I uh, 
realize that I um, can't do this right here. <laughs> that's uh, that's not allowed. We're just gonna back up here. Um, you know, I I don't know what I was thinking there. I was I guess very tired or something. Uh, no no explaining that one. Uh, but what I end up doing actually is going for a barricade just to make space so I can actually summon an IP. <laughs> um, and then I go ahead and go for the Collapse Serpent, of course. And I have Cast Space Engrave, which is pretty decent, so I'm able to get another draw. And it is a copy of Nibiru, which is like fine if it is a combo deck, but I'm like, it is going to be a very, very weak board. And I realize this, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's my own fault, right? I, don't, I have no one to blame but myself for that uh, very questionable line, for sure. And like I said, this this is uh, not the greatest and most convincing showcase, but it gets better. It gets better as uh, we move forward, so just stick with me here. I know it's not amazing <laughs> by any stretch, but uh, we're going to get there eventually. All right, he draws a copy of Droplet, which is unfortunate because this turns off literally the uh, only interruption on my entire board. Uh, so he's able to Droplet away the Alistair in his hand because he has a Meltdown anyways and turn off my IP. Uh, so that definitely sucked. Uh, he was able to also obviously just go for the follow-up play with Alistair. Normal Alistair to get Invocation. He can go for the Secure Guard in the line. Uh, funnily enough, I actually don't have a single Light Monster in my grave, which is actually a problem, kind of, because Chaos Ruler can't bring itself back that often. Since you're not playing that many lights in like your engine, so you're reliant on like hand traps um, or like Wyvern Burster. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna, he's going to go ahead and use the Invocation to bring out Makaba by banishing materials and then use Desires. And his Desires is going to grab him a copy of Schism and Impermanence. Uh, he's going to use the Invocation to add back the Alistair. And he has Ecclesia in hand now, so he can summon that. Uh, and he's going to add a copy of Fleur de Lise to hand. He did banish a copy of Punishment here. So it's possible that he's only playing one, because I feel like in most cases here you could just add Punishment. Because um, it accelerates your engine a bit more, but um, maybe he also just wanted to have it access his extra deck like the next turn, which is fair. Uh, he's going to go and attack Mascarena, and then attack into Barricade. Oh, also what I could have done with the Barricade last turn, I didn't mention this, but I could have also like, pitched the Ravine to add back Boot Sector, so I could like, Boot Sector follow up. Uh, that's like another thing I could have done. But he's going to set Impairment Pass. Uh, here I draw a copy of Gyusu, which is pretty decent. Uh, I know he has two disruptions for sure, in the Makaba as well as the Florida Lisa that I saw him search. And I can assume that that's like a back row um, that's like going to actually do something. So I'm like, probably three interruptions. It's going to be hard, but maybe it's possible. So I go ahead and normal summon the Gyusu. I'm like, this is the only thing that can reasonably ma uh, bait Makaba. Because he's going to want to off the field so I can't like follow up. Because I he knows that I have Wyver Burster in hand. So if I just summon Wyvern Burst, I can go into like Galatea and stuff. So there's no point in using like Fruit Elise on it. So he banishes it. Now what I could do is actually wand back the Gearsu, but I get a little bit greedy and I end up not doing that. <laughs> um, and you'll kind of see what I end up doing instead. So I go over Ravine to pitch the Nibiru, and then I go ahead and send Tracer because I'm out of really good targets. The best ones to send are Dark Worm and Router, and I went through both of them. So I just uh, you know want the Light Engrave so I can actually bring back the Chaos Ruler. That's the whole point. So I go ahead and do exactly that, and I saw him pitch Alistair, so I'm like, okay, he used one Alistair for Droplet, and he pitched the other one. If he has a third one to be able to like save his Makaba, he has it, um, and it is what it is. So my goal is just to clear the board at this point. So I go to Battle Phase, he doesn't summon uh, Fluid Elise because like, this Ecclesia is dying anyway, I guess, so it's fair enough. Uh, I go ahead and attack over the board here. And again, like I said, I could wand back the Gyusu, so I can go main phase 2, uh, plays into... Like Galatea, I can like Galatea shuffle back to set Crescendo. Um, he did have Imperm, but I also would have had like Dengusu access as well, so like it would have been fine ish. Um, but like I don't do it because I want to do it next turn. I'm just hoping that he can't kill me, and like just thinking that because he didn't have punishment, and I'm assuming he's out of Alistair, so he doesn't have a play, uh, like any starters, and like right now he doesn't have any starters. So I'm just like hoping I can wait out for next turn. Wand back the Gyusu and actually use its effect to send Nightmare and actually that way have a meaningful Orcus engine going. So that's why I don't do it this turn. Again, it's kind of greedy, but at this point you kind of ha have to be greedy, right? Like, that's that's kind of my logic there. Again, this doesn't look like, super impressive, but stick with me. It's Orcus, right? <laughs> uh, he's going to set Schism Pass. Uh, he drew a copy of Droplet, so yeah, no starters. Uh, I draw a copy of Babel, which is decent. Uh, and now I go ahead and go for the Wand play to bring back Gyusu. Uh, Gyusu effect 
Uh, and he's actually going to just scoop right here. He has Imperm, but uh, if he Impermed that, then I could just go for like more Orgus plays, or I could just attack for a lot of damage as well. I can't remember exactly how much life he was on. Uh, I don't think it would have been game right there, but um, I would have been able to like pre-guess the game state quite a lot there. So yeah, moving on to game two. I don't think he should have scooped actually, but he decided to anyways. Um, but yeah, moving to game two, he's going to go first this time. Uh, he opens Meltdown, Ice Dragon's Prison, Maximus Punishment, Ecclesia. So he has both of his engine again, uh, and it's pretty good, right? He has Maximus as well. And then we have Lightning Storm, Girisu, Gizmek, uh, Pankratops, as well as Ravim. So our hand's decent. Uh, it's really nice going second, uh, which I expected. So he's going to start off with Meltdown. He's going to Meltdown for a copy of Alistair. He's going to go Alistair. I don't have any interruptions here, of course. So he's going to be able to go Almirage for Secure Gardener and then go make Makaba. He's going to summon everything in defense, which is uh, pretty smart. Uh, he's going to bring back Alistair with Invocation. He's going to summon Ecclesia. And he's going to add a Fluid Elise. So he doesn't opt to summon Maximus this turn. Uh, probably because he didn't start off with like Nadir Servant specifically. Um... So, I'm not sure. There, there definitely was still a way for him to end on a schism. If he sent, like, Titanoclad and Apcalone, and then pitch something that just isn't the schism. Uh, but I guess maybe he just wanted to keep all of these cards in hand, which I guess is reasonable. Although, Window definitely would have hurt, for sure. Uh, he's going to set Punishment and Ice Dragon's Prison. He probably also thought this was just good enough. Like, he has Makaba, he has Punishment, he has Fluid Elise, and he has Prison. Uh, but here I draw a copy of Routed for Turn, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, so I go ahead and summon the Pankratops, of course. And then I enter the battle phase. I attempt to end main phase to see if he's going to use his Fluid Elise to like, force my Pankratops early. Like, he doesn't. Uh, so I just attack over the Ecclesia. So now I know his knight's off. Uh, and I use the Pankratops, and he lets his Macabre die, so he has Alistair for next turn. Uh, he doesn't want to get rid of his cards in hand. He just lets it die. Uh, and then main phase 2, I use Lightning Storm to clear away his back row. Uh, and because he had a fluid release, I, I knew that he probably had punishments set just because, um, you know, desires. There was no desires this time. Uh, so I clear away his board. He has no more interruptions, so I'm able to kind of pop off here. So I go ahead and use Ravine to send Router, or Pitch Router to send a copy of Dark Worm, and add a copy of Trace off the Router. And then I go ahead and go for the Dark Worm, go for Striker. This is like what the deck is supposed to do, in theory. So yeah, we go for Brute Sector, Brute Sector effect to summon Tracer from hand, and then I go ahead and use Tracer to pop the boot, and then bring up Recharger, and then I actually use these two, because I know one of the cards in his hand is Floyd Elise, I know the other one is Alistair, I don't know the last card in hand, so I'm like, I want to check for Nibiru, so I go ahead and summon Verite first, and then I ask him if there if he has anything here, because uh, this is beyond Nibiru range, because I like Pankratops and did Tracer and stuff. So like, if he has Nibiru, he kind of is forced to drop it here. Um, and since he didn't do anything, I assumed he didn't have Nibiru at this point. Kind of a risky conjecture, but uh, that was kind of just my thought process. Um, so I go ahead and normal summon Gearsu as a follow-up, and go for my Orca stuff now. Uh, and then I go and uh, send Nightmare, and then send Wand, and then bring back the Nightmare, etc, etc. Yeah, I didn't go for the Chaos River because I'm like, I'm not going to burn myself again when I already have Gearsu in hand. In worst case scenario, even if I got negated by like a Veiler or something, I just go for Dragoon and pass. Um, but I go for Galatea. Uh, I could have done it with like the I could have done a Chaos Warrior with the Gears as well as the Tracer that I left on board. That's why I left it there to keep that option open. But I'm like, I don't want to mill my Red Ice Fusion again and just be very sad. So I just go for um, Galatea, which is a safer play. I set Babel, and then go for Dengirsu, and then link those away for IP, and then go for uh, Verte. So yeah, the goal is just to kind of like just end on this kind of a setup. It's not like insane or anything, but it's like good enough to where it can get you there a lot of the time. Because uh, this this can get you into like zero Boros. Because um, if you're resolving Chaos Ruler, you have a high chance of having like more like stuff in Grave that you want, like between Nightmare, uh, Symbol, and Gizmek. So if you have like any combination of those, then you can like zero Boros the board as well. So it's like. It turns into an extra interruption, which is pretty cool. Or worst case scenario, you just go Unicorn, of course. Um, 
I only have one card in hand to discard, so I have to kind of pick my poison here. He draws talents for turn, which is actually a pretty good draw for him. Um, so he's going to banish to summon Maximus now, and I'm like, okay, I don't want him to like send Entuses and stuff to like try and break my board. So I just immediately shotgun the Nightmare for Symbol to get rid of the um, Maximus here. And I'm like, I was actually pretty fortunate because I didn't know when I was able to really use the Stingusu window because it doesn't line up very well against Alistair, right? Uh, he's going to normal Alistair, and I just go ahead and negate with Dragoon. I already played into Talents, um, and I was actually thinking, like, if he has Talents, you know, like, I'm already playing into it, so, you know, that's kind of, it is what it is. Uh, getting Gizmic and Grave is pretty nice, of course. Uh, he's going to Talents to take, and then I decide to not chain IP so that, like, he's more incentivized to take the Dragoon, because, like, obviously taking IP doesn't do anything. Uh, I want him to take the Dragoon, um... Because uh, I side here, I'm going to go ahead and use Masquerina and Resolution. And I leak away my whole board into uh, Zero Boros here. Um, and I was hoping that like maybe he would use Dragoon to like, try and pop it, because it's uh, protected with IP. Um, I mean, it wouldn't have really done anything, but I thought it would have been funny. But uh, he doesn't end up doing it. He summons a Fleurdelis, he goes to battle phase. And I'm like, okay, if I just Gizmec, I don't even have to summon to the zone Zero Boros points to. I could just summon it. And then it'll be bigger than the 4k uh, Dragoon, because th there will be 12 cards banished. So it'll be on 54. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just go ahead and Gizmic here. And then yeah, he's going to go ahead and just scoop from there. Because he doesn't really have any way to like out this. Like He could link it to a random link too, um, but it's not going to do anything. Um, and I have like, I don't have a great Orgus follow-up necessarily, uh, but I have like enough on the board here to where like the... The Gizmic plus the Zero Boros would have cleaned it up. So yeah, that's like kind of a basic showcase of what the deck is. Again, it's not going to be anything like insane. Like It's not crazy compared to the top tier decks right now. And that game one definitely didn't help my case. But hopefully this game two was like good enough to kind of show what the deck is able to do. Um, the whole point of it is to just try and play Orcus as much as you can. Um, and not necessarily go for like big high ceiling plays because... Like, the high ceiling plays just lose out to a lot of different things. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Uh, consider subscribing for more informative and competitive viewer content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All three in the description, as always. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you, guys.